In studio with the Admiral Bill Stubblefield, Maria Lawrence, who I was instructed by Jim Klein to wish you a happy 70th birthday, Maria. Congratulations. Stop, 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 stop. Thank you. And I'm not 70. Jim, you're in trouble. So You're in charge of him, too. I am. I yeah. am. I thought you were always at 55. I, I, yeah. Or 45, yeah. whatever you want to say. That's fine. Well, happy birthday either way. I know it's in a couple of days, not today. But it is. Enjoy, it is. Thank you. Thank you. Week. It's actually, um, it is Saturday, and um, my daughter, who's getting married this summer, has a bridal shower <laughs> on the same day. So oh. lots of celebration. So there you go. Are you doing the uh, annual Maria Lake Thomas plunge for the birthday? I am not. <laughs> You're breaking that tradition? I Yeah. Yeah. There was never a tradition, <laughs> Rob. But, you know, maybe when construction is finished, I'll do a Lake Thomas plunge. Maybe then. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be, that'd be nice. Uh, in studio with uh, Jennifer Matthews and Colin Hitt, it is uh, Home Show 24, which... Uh, this year, thankfully, is about two weeks later, which I'm hoping means a little bit warmer weather there, Colin. Warm and no rain or snow. That's yeah. what we're or hoping snow. for. Yeah. Lots of yeah. sunshine. You guys got to come much, come closer to your microphone so we can actually hear you. Just lean into it if you have to there. Uh, but either way, so uh, what are our dates this year? April 6th and 7th. And we're at the Roundhouse again. At the Roundhouse again. Okay. Anything new for Home Show 24? I will let Colin handle that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, no major changes to the layout or anything like that, but kind of the, the biggest thing that we should point out to the public is that um, East Liberty Street, or what some people refer to as Upper Queen Street, has just recently been changed. So it used to be one way out coming out of the roundhouse. Now it's a one way in to the roundhouse. So that road um, probably doesn't show up on your GPS yet, um, but it has been renamed Roundhouse Way. The city just did that. Um, so that'll be one kind of change as people are coming and going if they're accessing the roundhouse property on that side of the, the railroad tracks. Um, we still are encouraging people to also park at the train station. They can walk across the the footbridge to get across the tracks uh, safely to the roundhouse side and then also they can utilize all the, the parking at the um, the city's public lots that are in close proximity there um, and we'll also have the trolley running through uh, EPTA so uh, that'll run on a continuous loop I think from 11 to 3 and that's roughly about every 15 to 20 minutes it should be hitting each of those city public parking lots where do you pick that up just right at the the city public parking lot. Right yep, there. and it'll it'll pull around and drop you off right at the train station. You would access the train station, go across the footbridge, and that'll land you right in front of the roundhouse. Is there a particular city parking lot? I can I think of three or four or five in the city with public parking. There, Which one are you talking about? Well, there's about four or five that are probably within about a two-block radius of that vicinity. So we're encouraging people to utilize all all of the city and, parking lots. And the bus will stop by each one of the parking yes, lots? Yes, sir. Okay. That's correct. Yeah. And yep. there will be signage at each of those okay. stops that say, Home Show, pick up here. Now, how many vendors do you anticipate? And a corollary question, how many people do you anticipate over the two days? So vendor-wise, um, about 130. And last year we had close to 5,500 people that attended the show. So with the warmer weather, we're really hoping to bump that up sure. as well. Yeah. Is there an economic impact to the city that's measurable from holding the home show? Uh, that's a very good question that we should ask our executive officer who's <laughs> absent today. Um, Mr. Knowles. Mr. Knowles, also the uh, mayor of Martinsburg. Um, yeah, I mean, I, it definitely brings people downtown, so that that is for sure. And there, we have food trucks and things like that on site. Um, however, I would assume that some of our downtown businesses are benefiting from having that added exposure with us having the home show. Is it measurable or not? I personally don't have that information to answer that. Is it measurable the amount of business that's done by the vendors who participate in the home show? Absolutely. Yeah, so a lot of our vendors use this uh, to pretty much set up the rest of their calendar year. Um, so they use it to network and prospect with potential clients, and, and literally they work off of that list the rest of the calendar year yeah. to set up appointments. Has there ever been an estimate of the dollar amount of business that, that, that generates? 
That's a very good question um, that we have not had answered. I guess th th that's sort of a hard thing to dollarize because each business is so different. And so, you know, what one person does compared to the next, you know, you, you could be talking two totally different price points and, mm -hmm. you know, in scope. Um, so whether it be a, a remodel project or a new construction project where they're building from the ground up, or maybe it's a banker or lender or an insurance agent or something like that that's getting, you know, a new insurance policy or a, a, a new. New, um, you know, finance a new client uh, through financing. So mm -hmm. it is sort of hard to measure that, I think. <clears throat> but it's uh, there's just a whole variety of people. Everything uh, soup to nuts. I mean, you can look at getting a new fireplace or a new roof or a loan or just um, you know, it's just very um, very broad, very widespread. Yeah. Over the years, there's been a lot of renovations done to the roundhouse. Are you to the is the facility to the point now that it meets all your needs or is there still some renovation that that you think is necessary um in in my personal opinion i think that uh there's still some work to be done down there specifically um uh, specifically we really would like to be able to utilize the th so there's three buildings down there um the the far right building if you're looking from the train station across the tracks uh, we refer to as the frog and switch building then you have the roundhouse and then the far left uh, structure is what they call as the bridge building so right now we're only utilizing the roundhouse and the frog and switch buildings um the hope is that in the future we'll be able to utilize that bridge building and the bridge building in currently be in process of being worked on they're adding an elevator to get from ground level up to the second floor um, they're in the process of adding HVAC I know there's some ch uh, some chatter about maybe putting a concrete floor in there so if all of those things come to fruition then I think that will be a very usable space for us um, because right now we're sort of operating at a lot a lot more limited space than what we maybe had at the mall or at the Berkeley Plaza in previous years. So that'll give us a lot more room to expand and add to our show and make it that much more successful. So, so actually your your hope is to use all three buildings. That's correct. Currently. Uh, are the bathrooms and and all three workable bathrooms? Um, so as far as I know, the bathrooms are functional there, and then we also do bring in uh, portable toilets okay. as well, okay. uh, just because of the um, the number of um, attendees that we have. The health department requires us mm -hmm. to have so many, you know, toilets per person or so. There was one. Were you thinking you needed to? Well, make a, make when, a visit. When you, when you get my age, Rob, you always have to plan ahead. So. That's why we insist on long commercial breaks around here. Yeah. Indeed, I was. Um, we were looking actually for um, as possibly using um, one of the buildings. I think the far left um, as a wedding um, venue um, have since decided against it, but. Matthew Umstead was um, very excited about showing us the bathroom down below, yeah. um, which is a recent, relatively recent sure. addition, I think. Um, but it is fully functional and very nice and not a portage on. And they do host weddings there currently. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. It, but it would have been bringing it all in. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just didn't have the capacity for that at this point. Will this be the location for the foreseeable future, or do you shop that on an annual basis? I believe we have three years left on our contract after this year, so um, you know, for the, at least for that time frame, that's mm -hmm. where we're going to be. Um, it's a great spot. We love bringing it to Martinsburg instead of, you know, the out outlying spots, so... What, what do you hear from the vendors and the people attending? Do they also agree it's an ideal spot? Because on the chat room, one person just mentioned he, he preferred a location other than the round, roundhouse. So well, on, on a cold day, it's a tough sell. Okay. I mean, the, I, the first year you guys moved there, the first the Saturday was cold, but the Sunday was brutal. And I know you didn't get as much turnout on the Sunday as you'd hoped for. Yeah, um, I... We in our area geographically, I don't know that we have an ideal situ or an ideal venue location. or location to host an event of that scale. So until that happens, uh, we sort of have to work off of what's available. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, I've heard people that preferred the mall. I've heard people that have preferred the plaza. I've heard people that really like the the roundhouse. We sort of 
tend to prefer the roundhouse just for the simple fact that it's number one i mean it's basically a builder show i mean there's other entities and organizations that are involved but to show off that architecture that's something that you don't see every day so i think just that appeal and that atmosphere really adds to it i agree that first year we were there sunday was brutal i was working the door i was bundled up i couldn't put on any more layers and i was still cold so you know i think it's just one of those things that you know it's we're in the mid-atlantic states and uh march april weather it's it could be a flip of a coin what we're going to get that day and uh, we try to prepare as best as we can for it um and then you know the the people have asked you know why can't you put heat in there and it's like have you seen the inside of that building i mean it, it would cost you an arm and a leg just to try to heat and uh cool that building so uh, the roundhouse actually stays relatively warm, even on a cold day. It usually stays 40, 50 degrees. Um, now, the issue that we ran into in that, that uh, the Frog and Switch building was we had to have some of those doors open right. for, uh, you know, for fire code and things like that. So that made it a little more chilly in there than maybe what uh, we had expected. So, Well, moving back into the uh, first week of April. Uh, hopefully you get a little break in the temperatures too that way because uh, yeah. you know now you're into spring yeah and that's what we we're hoping i mean honestly when we started looking at the calendar we were really we looked at march but that last weekend in march is easter weekend mm -hmm. so it just wasn't going to be feasible i mean that would have just totally not been a successful show if, if we plan that um so that's why we decided to push it back it's still early enough in the year for our landscapers and things like that to get uh clients lined up for mulching jobs or you know spring cleanups or whatever it may be um so yeah we're thinking that first week you know, that april 6th and 7th is going to be a great weekend for a show all right what do you have as giveaways this year Jen, you want to handle that? Our diamond sponsor, Pine Creek Structures, is offering $1,000 towards any of their products. He has a catalog that you can look through, pick your color, pick your style, uh, that sort of thing. Um, I haven't really heard if High Point Roofing is giving away a roof this year, but that is always a popular booth to visit to sign up for a free roof. Yeah, their caveat was you had to carry it home, Bill. That was <laughs> the, the thing, yeah, so... Um, that's, I mean, the silent auction, even though it's not giveaways, there's lots of items there that you can, you know, come by and bid on and, mm -hmm. and hopefully walk away with some cool stuff from that. And the vendors themselves all have, you know, you take your little bag and just go from, you know, from pens to magnets to, to what have you that you need in your home um, that, that um, is really good. Are there... Refresh my memory. Are there food trucks there Plenty. as well, or um, yes, it are. seems like there have been outside, so people can grab a bite? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so usually we have four or five food trucks that are out there, and we usually try to get a little bit of a mixture of what we we have. So not everybody's offering the same thing. Gotcha. Um, Jen, the food trucks this year, can you rattle those off? Mountaineer Meat Smokers, Almost Heaven Concessions, um, FN Flatbreads, and... Um, HD's truck is fed up food truck up. Um, and they kind of do burgers I know mm -hmm. they do a, a, a taco a fish taco yeah. I think HD um, fed us one year and it was amazing <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. It was pretty amazing. Uh, in regards to the vendors who will be there this year from the different categories, Jen, I know you've got the list. Uh, you don't have it with you, but you don't need it because you do this all year long. So. That's what I live. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is your life. <laughs> for better or for worse, this um, is your life. Go I ahead. should probably give a spout, shout out to my sponsors first. Of mm -hmm. course, I mentioned the diamond sponsor, Pine Creek Structures. We have our platinum sponsors, DRB Homes, um, High Point Roofing, Eastern Panhandle Heating and Cooling, Shenandoah Air Conditioning and Heating, Aspen Home Improvement, and City National Bank. Um, I do have some new vendors this year. Um, I have one that just signed up who is giving a home safety class um, and doing some demonstrations. Um, she um, wants to teach people how to be safe in their homes without carrying a firearm, but she also does a firearm class, so um, a little bit of diversity there. I thought that was an interesting new vendor mm -hmm. that we brought on. Um, we have um, some nonprofits that are going to be helping us out. Um, it's just, I mean, a little bit of everything. Is it too late if you're a vendor to get in? We have limited spots left. We're under 20, so, and the deadline is the 20th of March to register, but um, just a handful of spots left, and we're hoping to get those filled within the next week, and then we can move on to other things. Looking at the trades as, as a total, not trying to separate the individual trades, uh, 
roughly what percent of our local community trades is represented or participates in the home show? Are we talking as high as 50 percent, 75 percent? That's a very uh, good question to ask. Um, well, I'll put it this way. I don't know specific numbers to know how many businesses there are. I'll say that from our uh, the Eastern Panhandle Home Builders Association membership, uh, wouldn't you think that probably about 40 to 50 percent of our vendors are members and then we have you know the additional 50 or 60 percent that are non-members sure um so i think we have a really good representation um there are a lot of businesses that maybe do multiple shows whether it be in hagerstown or winchester or frederick or or northern virginia and usually when you're talking to those businesses they prefer the show here in martinsburg Mm -hmm. Uh, they always they i mean two or three people came up to me last year and said hey this is the best show that we've done all year and we've done three shows prior to this did you ask them why they felt that way Colin Um, I did and usually the response that I got number one is we don't charge an admission fee so uh, the public that's coming in they don't have to pay anything to get in the door Um, and I think it just the the clientele and um, the needs of those individuals coming through the door they are actively looking for something to get done whether it be like I said insurance policy or a total remodel or a kitchen or bathroom or something like that Good so yeah, yeah, and and uh, we were talking about nonprofits. I do want to give a shout out to the uh, Boy Scouts. So the Boy Scouts have been very instrumental in helping us um, with volunteers for parking there at the Roundhouse facility itself. So you know, without them, we couldn't get it done. I mean, we went a couple years without having someone kind of heading that up, and it was a, a total pain to be honest with yeah. you. And so they are really great and help us out every year. I would mm-hmm. suggest an improvement from last year. Don't have the nine year olds be valet parkers though. The kid really had no idea what he was doing yes. behind the wheel of my car. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Maybe tweak that one a little bit. Okay, yeah. yeah. Take his red jacket from him. Minimum age, 14 maybe. Yeah, okay. You know? Sounds good. Yeah, Jen, how do people get in touch with you if they want one of those 20 slots? Uh, you can call the office at 304-267-4710. You can visit our website at ephomeshow.com. You can register and pay online. Or you can also email at info at easternwvhomebuilders.org. I'm going to test your... Oh, good, Maria. Well, I was just going to ask. So is the cost um, differentiated between what type of vendor they are? Do you have a certain price point for... Size of the booth. Ho- size of the booth, builder, <laughs> so, home builder versus... Uh, whether Jen likes you or not. Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> we do not discriminate. <laughs> um, members do get a discount. Mm-hmm. Um and that is the, really the only difference. We have table spots, which are a little bit cheaper. Um, all the booths are 10 by 10. And we do have a couple of outdoor spots um, that are cheaper. But there, again, you have to... You're going outside. You're outside. So you have to deal with Mother Nature um, and whatever she decides to Some dish out that day. Some of them are pretty day. elaborate, too. They'll put the pavers down and construct sites yes. and whatever. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Right? Uh, is, is there... I'm going to test your knowledge of your list of vendors here. How many, how many vendors did you say you had? Do you know? Uh, right now, I believe I have 120. All right. What particular category of vendor, if we were going to categorize them by certain groups, you've got builders, roofers, landscapers, whatever, which category is most represented? I think right now it's um, kind of equal between the banks and the realtors. Um, that would make that's, sense. That's the biggest number that we have right now. Um, yeah. yeah. So uh, Kevin maybe answers this question better or not, but maybe you can, Jen. So interest rates are fairly high still on trying to get a mortgage relative to where they were a couple of years ago. They're not compared to when I bought my first house. Right. They're much lower now. <laughs> uh, but uh, have the builders in the eastern panhandle been adversely affected by those rates? And is business moving in one direction or the other right now, Jen or Colin? From what I have heard from the builders that are members is that business has been steady. Um, since since COVID hit and with the, the increase in the building materials, it really didn't affect our builders that much as far as the amount of business that they have. From what I'm hearing, they're all busy. Um, so that's... Colin, residentially, you know mortgages as well as anybody? Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, what I have seen over the last, call it, 30 months or so. I mean, it has definitely slowed down. We're, we're not seeing the volume that we saw in 2020 and 2021 because of interest rates. However, we are very fortunate in our area that 
we are constantly having people come and go out of the area, whether it be for government work or some of the local businesses or manufacturers that we have. So I, I don't know that we felt the pain as much as maybe some other areas have. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know I still have people call me um, and, you know, want to get a mortgage, want to refinance, want to look at numbers, whatever it may be. Um, so I do think that, um, you know, especially on the, from the construction side, they have stayed relatively busy because demand is still there. Um, and with a very limited inventory on the market of existing homes for sale, then construction is that much more important. So, you know, we are seeing that. And uh, yeah, like I said, I mean, we everybody in my office is seeing their phone ring a little bit more over the last, call it, three to four weeks. So we're, we're thinking that we're starting around that corner, rounding third base, and hopefully mm -hmm. headed for home. <laughs> uh, John, for you. Ten you, seconds, Bill. You, you're, you're answering intrigued me that most of them are realtors or insurance. Uh, are the other specialists, are the other trades, do you get a <laughs> lot of requests for one particular one, such as roofers? Short uh, answer. I need a short answer. Roofers is, yep. That's perfect. One word. Well, you got technically three. Roofers, yeah, yep. So, <laughs> but the last two words were short.